Adrian Crenshaw here in the nightclub, and then the great Trojan demo with Ben Miller in uh, Ballroom B. And then at 5 o'clock, we're going to conclude Show Me Con. It's been awesome. I, I think uh, having been here the last few years, uh, everything keeps getting, well, it just keeps getting better. And more, more people showing up and supporting a conference that's in our backyard, I think it's awesome. Uh, so I also wanted to mention as well, um, what did I want to mention? There's one more thing. Oh, next year's Show Me Con. June 13th and 14th of 2016. Make sure and go ahead and mark that on your calendar. Uh, that will be back here at the Ameristar. Um, going to introduce Evan. Did time start yet? Did time start yet? All right, we have a couple minutes, so if you need to grab uh, anything to drink, water, whatever, uh, go ahead and do that, and we'll get started here shortly. Yeah, pe people do dance up there, Evan. I'm not going to dance up there. Oh, you know what? That You want to talk about sensational. I'm not going to say I'm the greatest dancer or anything, but if you're doing your talk, and I'm up there. Yeah, well, now that's crazy. You're assuming I'm some kind of parkour guy. All right. Jokes. Ooh. Do I have jokes? Oh, man, this is, this is my, I always felt like this was kind of my calling, but now that I'm up here, I realize it's, that's not the case. So I'm going to introduce Evan Booth. I want to tell you a little something about Evan. He, uh, last year, created some, a series of videos uh, bypassing some of the, or, or actually, it was types of weapons that you could assemble post TSA, like in a gift sh out of gift shop items and stuff like that. It was really, really cool. Uh, he's also a big proponent of tapping into your creativity, um, among other really, really cool stuff. And I don't want to get too descriptive because he's going to show you a whole another uh, cool presentation in that same kind of vein. But um, we love having Evan Booth here at Show Me Con, and thanks for showing up once again, my man. Uh, thank you to everyone uh, to show up this year at Show Me Con. It's been awesome. And here's Evan Booth. Hey, okay. I can't get away with like not doing the mic, right? Can you guys hear me? It's pretty, pretty echoey in here. Okay. All right, I'll just do the mic. All right, so this is Practical Post-Apocalyptic electron Electronics. Kind of a mouthful. Um, came up with the title last night. So my name is Evan Booth. There's a bird. Uh, Twitter's a thing. Um, I, I don't post often, but when I do, it's it's what? Oh, I hate these things. Uh, I, I feel like a diva. Is that good? I'm gonna stare right at you. Okay, there's Twitter right there. That's a thing. Um, I work for a company called Skookum Digital Works. We're uh, based in Charlotte, North Carolina. We've got an office in Denver as well. Uh, this year, we've, we've uh, claimed the uh, best tech firm to work for in both cities, which is pretty cool. I like it a lot. Um, so when I'm there, I solve interesting problems with, uh, with technology, which is a lot of fun because that's kind of my, kind of my jam. Um, what? Oh, okay. I was like, a loose quarter? Somebody grab it. What's that? Did I do it with my mind or something? It looks the same to me. I'm just going to stare in this microphone. You good? OK. OK, cool. So Skookum, that's where I work. It's fantastic. I am. Uh, just a, a disclaimer, diametrically opposed to a sales pitch. I hate it. Like, you know the vinyl, like, siding guy who the, or the vinyl gutter person who sneaks his way in the house and, like, we're going to need to have your whole family here for three hours and you'll give you, like, a free cooler? You laugh because you did it, too. Yeah. It's awful. So, uh, just, to, like, I don't know, with that, with that uh, caveat said, um, I just really like solving fun problems. So, like, uh, if you guys have, like, fun problems, like business technology problems or, like, a, a crazy idea percolating, or if you have a song in your heart, or hey, if you like uh, solving difficult problems yourself with like awesome people, come talk to me. Um, if you don't have any problems at all and, and you uh, don't like solving problems, then you're probably pretty awesome, and I'd like to subscribe to your blog letter. Okay, so what is this? Oh, so backing up a little bit. Those aren't my birds. 
that these lights are on again. They should both be green? Yeah, they're both green. Oh. Tell you what. Hey, there it is. I'm going to grab this thing and get away from all this. Go over on the dance floor. Now I've got to hold this mic. Don't tell anyone, okay? So what is this? Um, I was in uh, Canada, heading up to, to Banff National Forest, with a maker friend of mine uh, named Shannon, uh, and he and I were talking about what would we do if, if, like, you know, a zombie apocalypse happened or, like, you know, everything went to crap, like that old chestnut. And he said something interesting, uh, and it kind of, like, stuck in my head for a while, and he said... Um, when everything, you know, gets wiped out, like, I, I want to be next to the guy who could build a cell phone. Where is that guy? And, you know, Shannon's a really smart guy, and, and like, I don't want to speak for him or anything, but I, I'm pretty sure that he, he doesn't think there's, like, one guy who could build a cell phone or anything like that. I, I kind of think his point was that, you know, we've got so much condensed technology and miniaturization and, and like, so many, like, uh, specialties that, that go in, into, like, the infrastructure in, involved in the cell phone or in, like, the actual I mean, like manufacture of it. Like, so many things. There's no one guy that could build a cell phone. And uh, that kind of stuck to me. And the thing I kept coming back to over and over was that, um, you know, there's, like, a, an obvious uh, uh, trend here, right? So the more complex our stuff gets, the, the less we understand it, which... Uh, is interesting, right? So, like, I, I think the beginning of this is stone tools and the end is like magnets or something, right? But, <clears throat> but that's a problem, right? Because we all rely very much on electricity and the things that it does and the things that it powers. But, like, I don't know, like, I, I think more and more of us are, are sort of re relegating the, the functionality and the, the inner workings to, like, you know, voodoo and smoke and mirrors and all that, which is fine. So, there's a fundamental, like, uh, growing division between uh, the people who, who completely rely on this stuff and the people who could not do anything with it if their life depended on it. And that's a problem, I think. And this is not like growing division, like, you know, good job, Caswell, you're growing our division. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Anything like that. So, okay, what's the solution to this? I really don't know. But what I'm proposing um, is obviously going to be some, some sort of packaged, uh, you know, educational material, right? Some big chunk of content. And for me, I think... Uh, you know, the packaging of the content, how it's organized and all that stuff is, is probably just as important as the, the actual content itself. So, um, I think it has to, it has to be four things, right? So I think it has to be concise. It's gotta be practical. It has to be accessible and it has to be fairly comprehensive, right? And, uh, you know, like practical, what is that, right? So like, I, I'm shooting a commercial for Maxwell House. You know, why would I need to do things with electricity, right? That's what Steve's saying here. Right. So, uh, of course, you know, that, that makes perfect sense. What slide is that? But you can, you can never account for this, right? You never know when that's going to happen. <laughs> and it definitely happened. So one, one, uh, one day you're, you know, shooting a nice commercial and you got your coffee tin and the next day you're like in a hellebird and like you're, I don't know, like in the, in the, the nuclear wasteland or whatever. These things happen, right? And you can't really control that. By the way, Fallout 4 has been announced. I don't know if you guys missed that or not. But I, I, I've been, like, giggling because I'm looking forward to it a lot. Uh, so anyways, um, I think that, that in order for this thing to be uh, really valuable to people, it would have to be, uh, I guess, f fairly, uh, fairly scoped out, right? So, like, it needs to be pretty intentional about uh, what point on the, the uh, well-being timeline that this stuff would actually apply to you, right? So we're not, we're not necessarily talking about survival here. So, like... You start off and you're like, oh, good, I didn't get eaten by something awful. And uh, I've got shelter a little bit, that's good. Uh, oh, I found some water. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm eating food that isn't people. That's, <laughs> that's a plus. Let's see. Uh, oh, I made fire, that's awesome. And then, of course, at the very end is selfie sticks. So, you know that, you know that if you get back to selfie sticks, you just need to, like, drop some more bombs and start over because you failed. You did not learn from history. But... The point of the, the well-being chart here is that I kind of want to be here, right? So, I know, who, who plays Minecraft in here? Anybody? You all, you all disappoint me so much. Good, okay, so in Minecraft, right? So, you start off and you've got nothing. You could, like, go pound some trees and get wood and all that. 
and then you start to uh, you start to farm and like get food and you survive, right? It's about survival. But like you know, you start to build your house, suddenly you've got like you know a couple stories on it. You got some really cool stuff going on, and then you discover redstone, right? And redstone is is kind of analogous to to wires and circuits and, and Minecraft, and it allows you to do things like automation. And suddenly you have light switches in your house, and you've got like some, you know, additional security, and you could build like, you know, uh, really cool, I don't know, hidden doors with sticky pistons and stuff like that. See, I think, I think that's, that's kind of where I want to be with, with the information that I'm gathering here. I want to be, uh, I want it to be useful for a person in a place where they're like, well, I'm not dying actively, right? And, you know, I could toil on forever, but hey, you know, I could probably utilize some, some power to make things a little better slowly, right? Start to rebuild some infrastructure. So, and I'm not talking about this, right? This is, n this is not for the enthusiast. So, like, you don't need to, like, I don't know, have a stash of all this stuff. And that stuff's freaking awesome, granted. I, I would love to be there. But I'm not talking about that, right? And that gets into my next point of why, why exactly I want to do this. Um, so I'm not trained to, you know, uh, classically as a, an electrical engineer. I do a lot of that stuff just because I like doing it. Um, and I think it's a good thing because I, I, I think it helps me be a little more uh, accessible. But um, I did mention that I love, freaking love problem solving. Uh, electricity makes me really nervous, right? <laughs> it's like invisible and, and satanic or something. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> so, and the other thing is I, I'm sort of crazy about MacGyver. Like, I really love resourcefulness. And... Um, you know, as a, a, you know the, I mentioned in the intro there, I uh, spent some time making weapons out of stuff you could buy in airports. I actually have a video clip with a, a few of those real quick, so I'll play that.
how Michael Bay takes off the condom right there. So yeah, that was a terminal cornucopia. Um, and then I, I got bored and I had a bunch of USB cables and I decided to make a bullwhip. Um, it's an eight, eight foot, uh, 18 plant bullwhip, uh, mostly USB cables. There's a DVI one in the middle there, it just serves as like the trunk. Uh, can you imagine how heavy that is? <laughs> and how much it would tear your face off? Oh, right. Ah, jeez. All right, so I'm trying to hurry through this. I really don't know how long this is going to take. Um, so then I built uh, I built Milton. <laughs> Uh, and Milton is, is comprised mostly of uh, uh, heads of a shredder, those metal like shredder heads. Imagine how gnarly those things are. They're gnarly. Um, I, I like wrapped them up with the RJ45 and then added a red uh, swing line stapler. And of course, um, I attached all that to uh, a bunch of like rolled up metal, like sheet metal from uh, like cases from computers and stuff. I think it weighed like 15 pounds. I, it's pretty brutal. Look at that HD. What is that? It's like an animal. Cool, okay. So, I like building stuff out of stuff. And I think that, that you don't need the, the full-blown, you know, you know, electric engineering workbench thing. I really think you just need stuff to do some interesting things with electronics. And I think that it just requires a small amount of knowledge to get there. So um, just a, a couple of disclaimers. This is no, by no means intended to be comprehensive whatsoever. We're going to breeze through some concepts that like people literally spend like entire careers on and lifetimes. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to try to avoid using any kind of jargon as much as possible, like using, you know, common language. Uh, so, so, for instance, um, the hurdy buzz sauce lives in little metal huts. That's, uh, you know, more accessible, I think. Um, talking about electricity. <clears throat> so, right, that joke sucked. Here we go. <laughs> Maybe you guys suck. I don't know, I'm just kidding. All right, so this is the first time presenting on this ever. I would love your feedback, as long as it's great. I'm just kidding. Uh, so, let's talk about electricity a little bit. Who in here is, like, has a good, like, you know, fundamental understanding of electricity and how it works. I would expect a good number. That's, yeah, okay, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so uh, let's talk about it. Electricity is simply the movement of electrons. Uh, and electrons, when they move, they create charge, right? And so uh, when we talk about electricity and how it behaves, we, we talk about it in three fundamental characteristics. So the first one's voltage. And that's measured in volts, right? And that's the difference in charge between two points. So really, it's the potential energy in the system between two points. Uh, next is current, measured in amps, and um, that is actually the rate at which that charge is flowing through the circuit. And then uh, lastly is resistance, and that's measured in ohms, ohms, and uh, that is just literally how, how uh, much the material resists current flowing through it. Now, when people talk about electricity and how it behaves, they, they uh, tend to use the analogy of water, uh, specifically the water tank, right? So if we look at a water tank full of water with a, uh, a pipe running down the middle, um, that's kind of like a battery, right? That's potential energy. So you could look at that as your voltage, right? Because you've got pressure on the end of that pipe because gravity is real. And uh, imagine you can get some work done with that water rushing out, right? So um, that is a, good, a fairly good parallel to electricity. It has some flaws, but it'll work for this, I think. Um, and so if we measure how much water comes out of that pipe in a set amount of time, that will give you an idea of the current, right? And so, oh, here comes a new challenger. Um, so now we've got two, right? And you'll notice that uh, we've given the one on the right a little fatter pipe. I just had a flashback to some spam I read this morning. Uh, and like the, 
they're going to get more water, more more throughput out of that because it's a, a little, it's it's more, uh, uh, it's more, it's wider, right? However, if we reduce the voltage in the uh, the tank on the right, then it levels out, right? And then it's the same, um, and that's because voltage and current they they correspond in that way. And so now, if you look at these two, same voltage, same uh, same current. Now we clamp one of them, right? What's going to happen? It's going to lower the uh, the amount of of uh, throughput in that that right pipe. And that's resistance, right? That's the, the difficulty material has getting through a, a particular medium. So let's, uh, let's look at an example here, right? So we got our water pipe, and um, let's call that 10 volts of, of charge, right? And we've got uh, 15 amps of current running down that pipe, and that's running into the motor, which is running our Ferris wheel, which is great, right? So let's, let's turn it on and see what happens. Oh, frick, that's not good. <laughs> what happened? I... Oh, oh, shoot. Well, the Ferris wheel can only handle five amps. This is problematic because we were, we were supplying it with 15, right? And obviously things did not go so well. Um, now we could fix this a couple of ways, right? So, um, we could, we could lower the, the overall voltage of the system, right? Which would, um, you know, uh, in a corresponding manner, lower the current. And that might work. Uh, you know, we, we could actually probably just add some resistance to this pipe as well and slow things down a bit. So, uh, you know, if only there was a way to figure out these exact values. Oh wait, there's Ohm's law. Hey, thank you, Ohm. He's my Ohm boy. <laughs> I feel bad about that. Um, okay, so Ohm's law is simple, right? Voltage equals the the current times resistance, or it's represented as V equals I times R because current is I for reasons. Uh, so if we look at our example and our poor people. Um, if we wanted to figure out what we need to modify about the current or the the uh, the voltage there, um, we could simply plug in that formula, right? So V equals I times R, and we know that um, uh, we got 15 amps coming out. We got 10 volts. We could actually, because uh, this is a theoretical uh, uh, zero resistance uh, scenario here, we could just kind of ignore resistance for this equation. We want to get to five amps, so we just divide both sides by three, and we end up with 3.3 volts. So now, if we lower our tank to that 3.3 volts, we'll get the right number of amps and we won't kill people. Yay, I love being alive! So, um, the, the downside of that obviously is that we've got, you know, we've got a lot less, you know, charge, a lot less potential energy stored up. So, we won't be able to run the Ferris wheel as long. So, let's take a different approach, right? So, what if we try to figure out that resistance value? Uh, so, we just plug in the same formula. We actually flip it around and say uh, R equals V divided by current, right? And say, uh, you know, plug those values in. We want five amps. So in that case, we just uh, divide ten by five, and we get um, we get two ohms. So if we add a two ohm uh, resistor to this pipe, the material will have just the right amount of struggle getting through that it's not going to kill people, which is great news because that's not good. So um, bringing this a little more into the real world, say we 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 said that the uh, tank is kind of like a battery, right? Um, whereas a battery has got, uh, you know, two poles. It, it's uh, it's kind of like the tank, except gravity kind of feeds back into the other side of the battery, if that makes sense. So, um, let's, you know, get rid of some of this stuff. And let's replace our Ferris wheel with uh, a real thing. Let's, let's uh, give it a, a light-emitting diode, an LED, right? And we'll wrap it around, you know, close our circuit out, and uh, we'll mark off, you know, like, not negative and positive here. Now, our LED has a, uh, a voltage and, and a current limit of, of uh, 3.2 volts at 20 milliamps, and a milli is a thousand, so, um, you know, a thousand milliamps is an amp, so uh, not very much, right? So if we turn this on right now, right, and we got six volts coming in, things are not going to go well. It's going to, it's going to blow up, not catastrophically, unfortunately, just kind of quit, and I don't know, it's kind of underwhelming, but um, let's figure out what we need to do, what, what resistance we need to add to this, this circuit to make this thing work for us, right? So if you want resistance, then we could take the uh, the supply voltage and minus what the the uh, LED is going to consume and divide that by the number of amps, which thousand uh, milliamps in an amp, so 20 milliamps divided by a thousand. Cool, do that stuff, and then we got uh, 140 ohms. They don't actually make a 140 ohm uh, resistor, so you round up 150 ohms, and now uh, everything's golden, right? Uh, does everyone does that make sense generally? If you guys have any questions at all, or like any comments, or just want to chat about anything. Definitely shout out. That's, that'd be uh, no problem. So current uh, uh, circuits like this, these are examples of direct current, right? It's uh, current flowing at you know generally in one direction. It, it makes a complete loop. Now the other type of, of uh, power that we are, are very familiar with is alternating current, right? 
Yeah, so um, alternating current is in like, SparkFun has this, this uh, little animation that's perfect for this because it continues along the water analogy, but instead of having a source of water uh, completely drain out and then lose all of its potential, it's almost like a pump that reciprocates, right? And water is, is occupying 100% of the system, so when that pump moves, it's going to, to move water back and forth along the entire system. And so if you are, at any point in the system, uh, able to, to harness that motion, that continuous motion, then you can, you can uh, generate power that way and, and use that to power uh, appliances or, or whatever you want, right? So uh, the benefit of this and, and the reason that we actually have this you know, running into our homes right now and the reason that, that all of the major power generators uh, uh, use alternating current is because it's, it's a lot easier to transfer alternating current over long distances and you don't have to have uh, as thick of wires and all that stuff. So um, what alternating current looks like, though, is uh, something like this. It's a sine wave. Right, so it's not like direct current where you have a specific voltage in a in a, a, a current. Right, it starts at zero, goes up to sixty, dips down to, to negative sixty, back up to zero, back up to sixty, just like that. So really, you have one hundred and sixty or one hundred and twenty volts of potential energy, right? And and the current does the same thing, and that happens sixty times a second, right? And so that's that's how you get uh, your your alternating current. It's a little harder to work with, I think, but. Uh, Looking at right now, like this is ubiquitous. We all have these things, and, and um, that's cool. Now, who has a box like this in their home? Pretty much everybody, right? You guys know what these things are, right? So, if you look at them, right? So, like all of these should have uh, inputs and outputs, right? So, uh, most of them will probably say it's looking for 120 volts at, at 60 hertz, and it's going to put out some DC value and give you some kind of, uh, you know, um, reasonable limitation on, on the amount of current that it can pump through as well. So, if you have a bunch of your stuff using these things, your stuff uses direct current, right? Just, uh, sir. You know, it, it could. The thing about these is these are not regulated power supplies. If you plug these in, like they're, they expect to have a load on them to a degree. And so the, the voltage that they, they, they uh, advertise is, is generally a little lower than what it just puts out by itself. Uh, and so they're, they're not exactly precision machines to begin with. So I think if you, if you pay attention to the current, especially, and it's, it's similar, and the, you know, I mean, the, the voltage needs to be on, uh, on track, then it should be fine. Go fry your stuff. I don't care. I'm flying home. So, after the poop hits the fan, right? Alternating current's probably going to go away for for a long time, maybe forever, right? Because uh, it takes a lot of manpower and a lot of a lot of personnel to 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 uh, keep these generators going and to, to you know supply the infrastructure. So, we're probably going to to be dealing with direct current primarily. And right now, um, people who, who are using renewable uh, renewable in, uh, resources like uh, solar and wind farms and all that stuff. Most of those collect is, is a, a, a DC current. So, um, just so you know, I think when it hits the fan, we're going we're to be dealing with DC for the most part, if it ever does. But cool. So let's talk about tools really quick. This is a multimeter, right? This has two little leads on it right here, and you push those at, at two different points in your circuit, and it will tell you a couple really neat things. So it'll tell you the voltage potential between those two points. It'll tell you how much current is flowing through, and also it'll tell you how much resistance it met, you know, going through that particular circuit. And um, some of them actually tell you the temperature and stuff like that too, which is pretty neat. And this is uh, just it, you know, it being used. And so, um, yeah, those are, I mean, that's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> These usually run on a couple AAA batteries. Uh, next up is uh, a soldering iron. This is a piece of metal that gets hot. I've got nothing else to say about that. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, who, who's, who in here has soldered before? Soldered some... Dang! Why haven't you played Minecraft? Oh, that's a, what do you guys do for a living? Like, you could go home and solder? That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm really wondering... Like, uh, anyways, I want to skip this part about soldering, then, since everyone solders. You guys are soldering right now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah, you, you solder, you heat up metal, and you, you uh, melt solder on it, and it 
it joins it and makes a conductive uh, joint. So cool. Right now, we got really cool soldering tools that plug right into the wall, plug into mains current, they call it. We got stuff like this, like the freaking you know, EE bat cave. Um, this is an oscilloscope. This is like a multimeter, but it tells you voltages over time. So you could actually track, you know, like a, a sine wave or, um, you know, I, I squared C bus and all that cool stuff. So once the poop hits the fan, you know, our tools don't necessarily change all that much. You know, they do make um, uh, propane powered soldering tools. It probably sucks, but, you know, everything probably sucks. You know, you just like stopped eating people a minute ago. So. Uh, and these things run for a long time. Like, I've got mine, I've used the heck out of it. Never had to change the batteries. So, um, it's basic tools, right? And like, all of the other stuff, like, there's a lot of accessories, side cutters, wire strippers, and all that. I mean, you could, you could substitute that with a good knife and some patience, right? So, let's talk about common components really quick. Uh, and this is if you're tearing open the, uh, you know, printer at home or, you know, popping open one of those wall warts. What are you going to find in there, right? Uh, so, real quick, let's talk about uh, through-hole versus uh, surface mount soldering. You guys probably know this already because you all solder things. Weird. Uh, so, surface mount is, is generally um, all of your pads are on one side, um, and, and like you just uh, basically pick and place all of your components and then heat the whole thing and the solder flows in. You don't have to go through manually. Um, it's a, a, lot, uh, a lot tighter from a space standpoint, and uh, it's a lot cleaner, I think. And plus, the, the components are generally a little cheaper, I believe. And through hole, of course, you, um, you actually poke the lead through the, the PCB and solder on the other side. So um, soldering for our purposes, like I, I think targeting through hole would probably be a better bet just because um, those uh, components are generally a little easier to salvage. So uh, just a side note. So um, let's talk about resistors. We talked about it a little bit and kind of what they do in a circuit. Um, they basically just re resist the flow of current, right? So they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, they come on these little uh, spools, right? Um, that's a surface mount little guy. That's a match. That's not a resistor. Huh. Don't be fooled. These aren't resistors either. I don't know. But uh, there's a couple on here, a couple other things. Um, and typical applications here are just like resisting current, like we said. Also, uh, there's a common uh, design pattern uh, called a, a voltage divider, which basically just takes two uh, like resistors and um, allows you to just divide a, 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 a uh, voltage in half, which is nice if you want to not like, I don't know, blow up L LEDs or your um, microcontroller and all that stuff. So um, these things are everywhere, right? Pop up in anything, there's a billion of them in there, they just spill out like ants, it's weird. So next let's talk about capacitors a little bit. Uh, these generally have uh, two leads coming off and they're like little batteries, right? They just store an electric charge. And again, these come in all, all different packages, shapes and sizes. Um, and the typical application for a capacitor, if it's sitting on a, a, a circuit and um, uh, energy is flowing into it, it's going to start storing up, right? And if it feels like a, a, a dip in there, like it, it wants to be satisfied, right? So it's going to start, you know, um, trying to fill in the gap. So these, these things work really well to uh, filter signal, right? So if, you're, if you want like a constant um, power supply to, uh, you know, like, like a more sensitive component or, or like, uh, I don't know, like an Atmel uh, MCU or something like that, um, it's really nice to have one of these nearby. It works kind of like a, a little like on-site uh, uninterruptible power supply. Pretty neat. Um, smoothing current as well. Uh, you, you'll find these a lot in the wall warts that do just that, um, as it's, it's trying to um, smooth out that that um, uh, AC uh, sine wave, right? And also storing energy, right? These things are not as efficient as batteries um, in terms of, of like losing its charge and regaining it. Um, but they are a lot, a lot more durable, and so there's a trade-off there. And those are found in everything. How about that? So uh, let's talk about diodes real quick. There are a ton of different types of diodes, but uh, for this this uh, talk, we're just going to talk about one, which is like the generic diode. It's is basically a one-way valve, right? So you've got an anode, a cathode, and a pesh mode, and basically, like this, this uh, will only allow energy to uh, or uh, electricity to flow one direction and not the other way, which is uh, incredibly useful. Um, uh, actually I'll show you where I used one in a minute, but um, it's good for just managing, uh, like if you have uh, like a solar array or something like that, and you have it connected to a, a charge controller or something like that, or maybe you're feeling bold and you have it you know, directly connected to a battery and you're trying to charge it up. Um, when the sun goes down, uh, this thing being in line with, with your circuit would keep the battery from trying to supply current to the, the solar panel, which is now slacking because it's dark, right? So it's good for stuff like that. 
And these things are found in everything. Um, let's talk about transformers real quick. Uh, so a transformer is a type of inductor that transfers energy between two or more circuits just based on electromagnetic induction. And these guys you will find in most of your wall warts because these are uh, basically like the first line of defense. It's going to take that, that 120 volt, 60 hertz signal and like knock it down to a, a, a little less scary range before it, it starts to, to rectify things and give you a nice smooth DC output. So uh, you know, typically where I find these is, is uh, uh, like in, in circuits where I need to step up or step down voltage um, to keep, uh, or for specific components in the circuit. So if I have a thing that you know, needs a lot of current, I, I you know, don't have that much, I might implement a, a step up transformer to bump that up, right? And there's a trade off between voltage and current there because it's directly correlated. So relays, I freaking love relays. Uh, and I think they're great for, for this type of thing because they're very like, they're very tangible, right? It's like the, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like physics as opposed to, like, everything else is sort of chemistry. You don't really see it working, but relays you do, and you can hear it usually, and that's kind of refreshing, right? And, like, relays are, are, are really simple. Who knows what a relay is in here? Good, I get to tell you. Okay, so, uh, so relays are used to connect high current circuits with low currents. Right, and the way this works is, is pretty pretty brilliant. So it's just this little package, and they come in all all shapes and sizes. But there's an electromagnet in here. You guys ever do the the the, uh, the wrap a pencil with a copper thing and put current on it, make an electromagnet, pick up nails and stuff? Yeah, you guys went to school in the south, didn't you? <laughs> we didn't read. Um, so yeah, so these these basically uh, are little electromagnets. And as soon as you charge that electromagnet up, it literally like will will connect the circuit like physically, and you could hear it clicking, right? So if you're uh, who else staying in the hotel here? That guy. Drinks on me. Okay, okay. So if you're at home, which is more likely here, um, what happens right before the air cuts on? You hear it click. That's a relay. Right, so that is that is it connecting a, a higher current, right? This uh, sending that along. Uh, this, like you usually find relays in um, in most of like your bigger appliances, like big TVs, stuff like that. Uh, you find a ton in the car as well. So um, uh, relays are interesting because they can be uh, configured in different ways. So um, let me try to explain this. So there's there's poles and there's throws. So this right here is a throw, and these two are are uh, poles, right? So this is just a single pole, single throw. So basically, if you supply current to this electromagnet, this switch will close, right? And so there's one, one real like uh, a connection that can be made here. Whereas oppo uh, opposed to this is a, a single pole, but it's double throw, right? So this has a normally open and a normally normally closed state. So this is like an like an uh, this is an if statement, right? This is an if else. Does that make sense? So like if you want to have a green light on until you hit a button, which sends current to this, and it flips it over and turns a red light on, like that's something that you could, you could very well do. Or you could do something more useful. They also have um, double pole, single throw, so this just makes two connections, basically. And then it gets crazy, you got, you know, double pole, uh, double throw, or you could, you know, do all sorts of cool stuff. So, uh, really, get really fun, because they're, they're really easy to work with, and you can start building logic gates, right? Who took, like, discrete math in here, anybody? A few of you, good. So, uh, you, you know, you can build anything with a NAND gate, essentially, right? Well, that's how you build a NAND gate with relays. So, like, if you're, if you're in a situation where, like, I don't know, you want to, you know, f feed in a voltage from a, 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 I don't know, a diode that detects the sun, right? And you want to make sure that you have a, a switch on in your house, right, at the same time, and if both of those, you know, situations are true, but you don't have the override switch thrown, right, then it won't water the crops, right? You could do that with relays. You could start building circuits out and build logic. So this is, this is what, uh, this is what we do on a, on a, on a really granular scale, right, inside of a basic CPU, but we do it with transistors, which are, are similar, but, um, uh, they're, they're a little more magical, I guess. You don't hear them clicking or anything. It's kind of disappointing. But uh, anyway, so you can find relays in a lot of stuff. Like I said, large appliances. Uh, under the hood of your car, you've got a bunch of them. Just take somebody's car, grab, I don't know. Um, <laughs> basically, in, in things that go click, your fridge does this, I guarantee it. Your, um, 
you've got a few of these, I'd say, in your um, your power supply and your computer at home. But be careful when you're doing that because those capacitors are huge and they can kill you. Okay. So if I'm digging around in a printer and I'm finding little parts and I'm popping them off with my soldering iron or whatever I have, like how on earth am I going to figure out how to use any of this stuff? Who knows the answer to this question? Data sheets. Right, so any component, any any uh, a discrete component that's made will have a data sheet, and a data sheet is generally like you know 40, 50 pages long, and it's every single thing you could possibly want to know about the specific component. So, um, so it's just a comprehensive overview, right? So, a few things to look for when you're looking at a data sheet, like things that I look for typically are um, pin out diagrams, and this this just tells you what the function of each pin is, literally, and uh, I can uh, get a sense for um, what that component expects from an input and output uh, standpoint. As well as any implementation notes. So if I had to, um, you know, add a specific capacitor to the the uh, voltage input pin, right? It would tell me that in the impl implementation notes. Uh, I would encourage you to check out alldatasheet.com. That's not plural. Alldatasheet.com. It bothers me too. Um, but then you start poking around and uh, uh, get an idea of what a data sheet looks like if you haven't seen one. And then further reading. Um, Every circuit is an Android app. That's um, I think I, I paid like for the pro versions like four dollars something like that, but it allows you to just you need know, to sit there and drag out like, all these components in a, in a circuit, and then simulate it, and then you could look at the the voltage at each individual node, and then see the current running through. Like you could you know put switches in there, relays, uh, little you know LEDs, anything, right? So it's a lot of fun to kind of uh, explore and, and get a sense for how these things work. And we've really only scratched the surface here. So, like, we didn't talk about transistors, which, honestly, like, that is, like, the invention that revolutionized pretty much everything. Right? You guys have transistors on you right now, millions of them. Um, and so, um, but this is a good starting point, right? Because, like, you start to get into the little voodoo there. So, like, this is a, a good manageable chunk. I, I want to push you so you, you, I don't know, check some of this stuff out, but don't get overwhelmed. So, um, I'm a very practical person, and so I, I like to, I like to, you know, put some of these ideas to action. So let's talk about what that looks like. Uh, in this case, that looks like a 6 by 11 shack in Kentucky. I called the shack, which because I'm clever. <laughs> so uh, this is actually a little shack on my, my parents' land. They live in Kentucky, rural Kentucky, as you can see. And my, my, grand, my grandfather built this for me when I was probably 10. This is like a little, like, I don't know, place for me to get away, you know, from, <laughs> from everybody else. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. I just put that together. <laughs> no, so um, so yeah, no, I went back and I was like, you know what, I, I've got a bunch of like stuff from yard sales and a bunch of electronics and crap that I don't mind taking apart. I want to drag all that to Kentucky in this shack and like, I don't know, put some circuits in it and like make it a little more livable. So so this is my this is my IRL Minecraft, right? So I'm in there and I'm like, I've got some water, but it's dark and it's like, uh, actually this is this is the first thing I saw when I walked up. Sure. I didn't want to nuke my shack, so then I did the next logical step. A cleaning oh. montage! Oh, I really forgot. Then it was clean. That only took like two days. <laughs> cool.
Cool. All right. So then I started setting stuff up, right? So um, I made some like a control panel and did some cool stuff. I had an uh, ATV battery, uh, like a lead acid battery. It was all stilled up and everything. So I used that as my primary energy source. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to address was lighting. And so I, I had like a little tchotchke, you know, nine LED flashlight that people give away. You guys probably have like a dozen in your pockets right now. Any vendors in here? I want one. I want nine. So, um, so yeah, I took that apart and I, I wanted to use the LED array and um, use that as a, a kind of like a light fixture. And so I actually um, wanted to try some different methods for soldering with no tools. And I had a butane torch and I took, uh, basically took a pliers and I took a nail and heat it up till it was red hot and then like would, you know, I don't know, you know, solder a joint and then like heat it up again and solder. It look, probably looked like I was doing some, like some crazy dabs or something, but um, it's all blued out. But I think the best route, this would probably work if you had a bunch of nails lined up in a fire just waiting. They were all red hot and you just like did one, laid it down, went to the next one, like pretty a little more efficient. Um, but eventually I, I like just sort of cut out the middleman and it just worked pretty well. Yeah, that probably shortened the life of my LEDs a little bit, but you know, it still worked out all right. Pretty cool. I uh, attached it to a, a full bottle of water to uh, act as a, a diffuser, and then I, I rigged up a flashlight. Uh, just connected the um, uh, the uh, leads at the switch in there, and that was my little hammock remote. So um, when I string up from my hammock, which goes from one corner to the other, I could easily cut the light on and off. There you go. So, a uh, fun fact: um, I was sleeping in my hammock, and it was like 2:30 in the morning. And um, all, all of a sudden, out of no, and I'm like, I've locked the door, of course, because you know I don't want to die. And I, I felt a, a very, very sudden impact in, in my uh, crotchial region, and uh, followed by a loud thud. So I was like, What did what just happened? What just happened? And I tried to turn the light on, and of course, it was um, actually the light that fell off the ceiling and, and hit me in the nuts. But <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, it was terrifying. <laughs> So anyways, I put it back up. All right, so this is my power setup, right? So I've got, I've got my 12 volts coming in from my lead acid battery here. That's just running to the uh, uh, positive and negative from just a, a cheapo, like, uh, USB cigarette lighter adapter, right? That'll take 12 volts. Because uh, your car, like most cars, run on, on t between 12 to 14 volts, depending on the, the health of your battery. Um, so that gave me a nice 5 volt uh, signal right here. And I've got uh, 12 running over to this cigarette lighter, which goes over to my uh, inverter. So if I wanted to use uh, an inverter for anything, run a fan, do anything like that, I could do that. Uh, and then I've got this backup, right? So I've got this 18 volt battery. And this is, a, this is meant to switch uh, 120 volt AC uh, to, I think it was like six and a half volts DC, something like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to run some current through it and see what happens. And it actually gave me a nice steady uh, 5.7 volts uh, coming from a, a 19 volt uh, DC signal, so I was like, oh, whatever. So it's probably not very efficient, um, but it did work in a pinch. There's uh, there's strong strong sad right there. Cool. So um, I wanted to build my control panel, and I, I kind of laid it out so you could see how everything works here. Uh, there are three switches. Uh, this one here controls the the main light. Uh, this guy here is um, connected to the. I put a sensor on the door, so you could like you never open the door, and the light would be off if you had that enabled. And then. This is the alarm circuit right here. I got some better shots of that. Uh, I found a, a, a nice relay, nice relay. Um, a double throw, single, no, double pole, double throw. I don't know, but it had, a, it had eight pins on it, so um, it had uh, normally open and normally closed on both sides. Two minutes? Oh my gosh, I'm almost done. No, we're good. So yeah, this is the circuit for the, um, uh, the master lock, the alarm, right? I, I thought it was interesting because, like, when you when you close it, you kind of have to have the key to uh, to disable it. I don't know, unless you just pull the wires off, whatever. So this is just the light switch. Hey, oh, and I think this is the uh, door sensor.
status indicator there. I don't know why. It's six by 11 foot. <laughs> like I'm not gonna know. <laughs> the light's on, someone's in the house. <laughs> the call was originated from upstairs. Oh man, so speaking of security. Um, yeah, so the, the little um, uh, momentary switch that I had on the door came from this, uh, this blower. So I mounted it up uh, somewhat nicely. And so there it is running to um, the, the control panel. So the alarm system actually took an old head unit from a, a Honda. And these are kind of nice because um, it, you know, all of this, the circuitry is kind of expecting to run on 12 volts. So the LEDs generally have um, uh, resistors built in. So you could just throw not, you know, 12 volts at it and whatever, it's fine. It's not gonna do anything. Uh, and so I took um, the, the little um, uh, motor in the gear assembly that uh, was responsible for loading the disc itself. And I wanted to make a, a latching relay, right? So one that once you triggered it, it would uh, stay triggered. Like so, um, like if, if I was going to set an alarm off, I wouldn't want uh, someone to be able to turn the alarm off by just merely shutting the door back, right? So uh, I think that's what this video is. So I don't know if you guys could really see that, but I've got a, a clothespin, the old school like clothespin circuit, right? So there's wires on either side separated by a little piece of plastic. And as soon as I supply uh, 12 volts, once that lock closes, it, it uh, flips over a relay, one that I found in a car. And um, this motor spools up, it starts uh, you know, winding up the string, and then it yanks that plastic out, closing that circuit, which is these, uh, uh, these uh, four nine volts, right? And I didn't have it connected for the test because that um, was coming up next. So um, does everyone follow that? Everyone, but what else is interesting about this is like this introduces the concept of time, right? So I could add a timer here, longer string if I wanted to. So uh, that's something that, that isn't typically easy to do and you don't have uh, access to any like more sophisticated components. So uh, for the alarm system itself, and uh, this, I think this is the last video, uh, I wanted to make sure that I knew that someone was in my house and so, um, so basically I connected those four nine volts and ran that through a very thin wire wrapped around a, a fuse, which is, you know, a, a very thin wire is going to act like a resistor itself and start generating a lot of heat. Uh, so much so that it is, it is enough to, uh, to ignite a firework. So let's see how that goes. I taped down the switch. So basically, if you come back and your house is burned down, someone broke in. <laughs> in any case, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, anyone, I don't have time for questions, right? So I'm, I'll be here all night, so find me and ask me questions if you have any.